Welcome to Tutorial 3, Part 1 on Dimensions. Before we actually start drawing, there are certain setups that you will have to do, especially uh, when you are using SketchUp on the school network. At home, uh, once you've made these settings, they will tend to uh, stay set. First thing you want to do, in fact, is change the toolbar. Some of the tools that we are going to need in the this part of tutorial uh, 3 uh, are not on that toolbar. So go to the top of the screen to view, click on it, toolbars, which is the first entry. You notice there's two choices over here at the beginning. There's getting started and large tool set. We will need almost always, in fact, the large tool set. So I'd suggest every time you come in, if, you, if it's not set up already, turn on the large tool set. Now all the tools up here in, in this toolbar are also in the vertical toolbar with, that you just turned on. So go back to view toolbars and turn off getting started. There we are. You've got the one large toolbar. By the way, it can be moved around on the screen. Uh, generally, it's, we keep it over on the left hand side to keep it out of the way. The next thing that you have to set up is the units. Uh, we will work in centimeters and to make sure that it is in centimeters, you go to the top of the screen again to Window. And when you click on Window, a new drop bar will open up under Model Info. Model Info, the first entry. Now, in the first column, you see it's highlighted as dimensions at the moment. Uh, highlight Units. Then it asks about the length of the units over here. Format, well we don't want architectural. We want decimal and automatically it changed from inches to millimeters over here. You see you've got lots of choice. Um, millimeters is too small for the sort of objects that we'll be making. We'll tend to work in centimeters, but say you were drawing a house, you would use meters. All right, I'll turn on the centimeters. Last thing to set up on this screen is the precision. Um, it's now to two decimal places. You don't really require that sort of precision. So we'll make it 0, 0.0, but you note in the drop down you can go from uh, no decimal places precision down to six uh, figures of precision. Uh, we'll prefer to keep it as 0, 0.0 and then just close that little window. Now the last thing is to do with the measurements uh, or dimensions bar which is down here in the right hand corner. Now on mine you can see it. You may not see it on yours. If it's missing go to the top of the screen to the gray area, though on some of your computers it may appear to be more blue than gray. Double click there and the measurements uh, bar or dimensions bar will appear. If I double click it now it will disappear. Uh, I double click again it appears. Okay, last thing is to get rid of the little drawing of the person there, whether it's male or female depends upon which edition you have of Google SketchUp click on that person and automatically gets surrounded by a little blue box. On your keyboard hit delete. Right, we're ready to work. Now, uh, as you've seen in the previous tutorials, each of the icons here uh, has a name. They're the tools that you're going to use. The first tool we're going to use is the circle tool. Click on it to turn it on. Note, by the way, when you turn on a tool the area around it uh, gets highlighted uh, by a white background in a little square. And we'll always start at the origin. You'll notice the name origin actually shows where the three axes meet. These are the same axes that you'd use in, use in mathematics, that is the X, Y, and Z axes um, that we need for three-dimensional objects. So we click at the center of the origin and pull out. Now, notice what's happening in the measurement bar. The name has changed from measurement to radius, referring to the radius of the circle. And you could pull it out to get any value you wanted. But that's not the method we prefer. Uh, we prefer, in fact, to use the keyboard to enter the actual radius that we want. So here's how you go about that. Well, first of all, let me show you what happens if you have clicked again. Note the circle turns solid. You can't change it now. It's a, it's a set uh, radius of uh, 90.3 in my case. How do you undo a mistake like that? There's two methods. You can use your keyboard. 
And if you want to undo that, you simply use Control C, on uh, uh, sorry, Control Z on the keyboard, or you can go up to Edit, Undo Circle. So I'm going to instead of using Control Z, I'm going to use Undo Circle. It's gone. Okay, start that circle again. Pull it out. Now here's the tough part. I want you to enter the actual radius for the circle that we want. Your temptation is to try to click in that box radius with your mouse. It doesn't, this tool does not work that way. Take your hand off the mouse. I know this doesn't come natural because you're used to using the mouse to control everything. Take your hand off the mouse. Not touching the mouse? Right. Go to the keyboard now and enter 25 and you'll notice that 25 has appeared now in the radius. Now how do you make it actually uh, change the circle to a radius of 25? Just hit enter on your keyboard. So you enter the number 25 on the keyboard and on the keyboard now hit enter. There you go. There's a circle of radius 25. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Put your mouse right above the center of the object that you want to magnify and using your mouse wheel scroll in. Now it's not exactly in a location where I'd like it to be either, so I'm going to show you another tool. And that tool looks like a hand. It's called the Pan Tool. It allows you to move an object right across the screen. So I'll turn on the Pan Tool and move our circle to a more convenient location over here. Alright, there's our circle of radius 25. Now, maybe you're not sure that you did make it 25 and you've got second doubts, so how can you check? Well, fortunately for Fortunately for us, there's another tool called the Tape Measure Tool. Turn on the Tape Measure Tool, click at the origin, and I'm going to pull it along the red axis right to the edge. And what do you see appearing in the box on the, the uh, right-hand corner? The length of that line, or the, the radius in this case, and it works out to 25 centimeters, which is of course what you had made it. And you could check it at any other point on the circle. They're all going to agree 25, 25, 25. There you go. Turn off, how, do you, how can you turn off a tool? Just hit escape. So I hit escape, and that is, well, it didn't completely turn it off, or turn on another tool. Now. We want to make a three-dimensional object, in this case a cone. To do that, we're going to use the tool called the Follow Me tool, but before we use the Follow Me tool, we're going to use the Line tool. Line tool, of course, the icon is a pencil. Click on the Line tool, go to the origin, and go up along the blue axis. And it's got to be on the blue axis. Note if I pull the line tool or pencil to either side, the line turns black. But when it's on the uh, blue axis, it's going to be at 90 degrees to the circle, which is exactly what we want. All right, now I want to once again make a line of a particular length. Now you could pull it up and down to make it any length, but that's often a, a very inconvenient way to do it. We're going to use once again the keyboard, so here we go. I've got the, the line tool on the blue axis. What do I do? Take my hand off the mouse. So you got your hand off the mouse? Good. Enter the following number then. 32.8. 32.8 on your keyboard. And now how do you finish that? Hit enter on your keyboard. And there's your line. And if you took out your tape measure, you'd find that line is 32.8 centimeters in length except I made mine 52.3, no, 32.8, I want to check it. Let me turn on my tape measure. Sure enough, 32.8 centimeters, good. Now, I'm turning on my line tool again. Now I want to go to the end of that line and draw another line all the way down to the edge of the circle. It's, and notice the name end point comes up there. And to complete the shape of a triangle, I'm going to go back to the origin. So click again and go straight back to the origin and click there. Notice as soon as I have a, a closed figure, that is all three lines are touching, the center fills in. And the center in this case is a triangle.
Now, it is the triangle that we're going to use to make our three-dimensional object along with the follow me tool. To use the follow me tool you have to give a path for that triangle to follow. What does that mean? Well, here's the idea. Go up to your toolbar and turn on the select tool. Got it on? Come to the circle and click on the edge of the circle. And notice the edge of the circle turns blue. All right. That blue line represents the path that this triangle is going to follow when it follows that line. It's going to go around 360 degrees back to where it started. So it should be blue on your uh, diagram. Now find the follow me tool. The follow me tool you notice is a, is a little box with an arrow coming out of it and then sort of an arc above it. Turn it on. Bring it over here. When you just hold it, I'm not clicking it, when you just hold it on, uh, next to the triangle, the triangle goes from the solid gray that it was, solid gray, to that dotted uh, gray uh, pattern. If I now click on that, let's see what happens. There you go. What happened? Well, that triangle went all the way around the circle, and in doing so, it filled it in to create a cone. So you've now got a three-dimensional object. You've gone from flat circle, a 2D circle, and a 2D triangle to get this cone shape. Quite neat, isn't it? Let's have a look at what the cone looks like to make sure it is uniform all the way around. Go to your toolbar now and turn on the orbit tool. The orbit tool allows you to rotate something or to look at it from different viewpoints. So I'm going to rotate it. Yep, it's a nice perfect cone. Let's see what it looks like underneath. So I'm going to push it up. Note the cone is hollow, which is fine for most of our purposes. We don't need it uh, an, a, a solid object. So it's actually a hollow cone. So there you are. There's your first object, a cone. I'm going to use the pan tool or the hand tool to put that down into the center. I'm going to scroll in to make it a little bit bigger using my wheel. The last step I want to do is to put a dimension on here. Generally, when you make something in SketchUp, you're going to make it in the shop as well. And you need to know the actual dimensions of the object. Well, here's one more tool, the dimension tool. And it's very easy to use. Turn it on. Notice the area around is highlighted white. I'm going to go from the tip of the cone, or it calls it the end point, to the edge of the cone, anywhere on the edge, and pull it out. And notice it gives the dimension 42, sorry, sorry 41.0 uh, centimeters. Click, and that value will stay there. Uh, that's the only dimension we're going to show on this particular object. It's mainly just to show you how to use the tool. Well, if you've made your cone, you've put the dimension on, you've got to save it. Where do you save these things? You save it in your technology folder in a separate SketchUp folder. And whenever you save anything, you've got to give it a unique name. So we go File. Don't go Save. Go Save As. If you go Save half the time, especially when it's not your home computer, you won't know where it has saved. Go Save As. And you find your technology folder. Mine happens to be kept in SketchUp for Camtasia videos. And it's, at the moment, it's called untitled.skp. You see it down here in the file name. All SketchUp files end in skp. And notice the icons they have. There's the icon that they'll end up with up there. So I click beside the untitled. And we're just going to call it cone. And then always add your name so that when I download these from your folder, I'll know it's your cone, not somebody else's. My name today is Billy Bob. And what is it saving it as? Well, it's saving it as a, an SKP file. Now, notice the choices. If I open up that drop bar, there's a whole bunch of different earlier versions of SketchUp there. We uh, at the school are using SketchUp 8. By the time you use this, or in the next year, certainly there will probably be a SketchUp 9. Uh, 
Uh, to be on the safe side, if you do this work at home, save it as SketchUp 8 and bring it to school on a flash drive or whatever as SketchUp 8. If you're at school, save it as SketchUp 8, which is the, what you will actually be using. So the SketchUp 8 is not actually named, it's just the top one in the, in the list. But what, once there will be a SketchUp 9, it'll be named as SketchUp 8. Okay, we simply go Save. So we've got a, a unique name for it, Cone, then your actual name, and then SKP. Don't use your nicknames. Use your actual name. First names are fine, unless there's two of the same name in the class. Go Save. Well, congratulations, you finished part one of tutorial three. Uh, in part two, we'll make uh, another object to spe specified uh, dimensions. Um, and once again, you'll use some new tools on the tool uh, bar. That's it for today. Thank you.